what? Oh, it says I'm live now. It was telling me I was rejected for a minute there, Rachel. That was no good. I wonder if that's because there's so many people using Zoom because <laughs> right. we're breaking the internet yeah. collectively yeah. We're all doing it. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Welcome, you guys. Welcome to the live stream this morning. I'm so thrilled to have you here. And of course, look who I've got here with me. I've got the Yay. Rachel from Two Love Studio. Rachel, thank you for being here. So excited to be here. Always love chatting to you, Joni. Love connecting with the community. Yeah. And I just have to say, too, I just really um, am thankful for you. I just wanted to voice Aww. that because it's really great to, you know, I think that especially in times like this, when things are crazy and we're not really sure which way to go and what yeah. we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to handle all this, that you have been um, a great person for me to go to and just to ask questions and to feel not so alone. So thank you for being my friend. Amazing. Yeah, no, it's definitely. And I know that we've had some conversations and like we've done some, uh, we had a call, we were like chatting about what we're how we're going to move through this. So yeah, right now having people to like connect with is so important. Absolutely. So hopefully for those of you who are just joining us, um, that you've got some friends out there, that you've got some folks that you can lean on and connect with, and especially who are also in the food photography industry. Um, so certainly I mean, there's I think lots our of- community is so supportive. So yeah, yeah just reach out. Reach Absolutely. Out on Instagram. Yeah, check Instagram. You can, of course, follow Rachel over at Two Loves Studio. I'm sure a lot of you already do because I think um, people who follow me for the most part are also following you. But for I anybody, you're always sending people my way, which is amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so many great things to discover in the food photography world. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it looks like we've got quite a lineup of folks who are joining us. Let's do some little Yay. shout outs here real quick. Oh, Duke, yeah. what's up? Paul is in the house from the UK. I love it. I love it. Uh, let's see. Susanna, Alessandra, Guido, what is up, you guys? Feel free to drop in the comments where you're coming to us from today. Um, for those of you who are on the other side of the world where both Rachel and I are right now, it's probably really late at night. So um, I don't know if you guys want to have a contest for who's <laughs> staying up latest. Who's staying up the latest, yeah. Exactly. Guido's from Italy, Soli from Paris. I love it. Uh, Sabine from Vienna, Austria. Excellent. Beautiful. Vienna is a beautiful place. I went there. Did you? A day ago. Yeah. Beautiful, uh, beautiful place. Well, I, unfortunately, I don't think any of us are hopping on any planes anytime soon, but. Uh, no, I, I have been going through my Italy photos from last year and just, you know, uh, feeling that because I'm like, I don't know when we're going to travel again. <laughs> so great point. Well, so for those of you who are joining us, uh, the topic of today's discussion uh, we'll certainly save plenty of Q and A at the time at the end. So as we're talking, as we're sharing things, insights, feel free to like write down your questions, and then I'll open it up at the end so that we can get to as many as possible. But just to kind of get us started, um, you know, Photoshop was definitely one of the things that you know when I think back to making New Year's resolutions in 2019, so last year, like total honesty right here is like, I didn't use Photoshop very much. I didn't know much Photoshop. Like I really relied mostly on Lightroom and that, that covered most of what I needed. But like, suddenly I started to realize there's a lot that's in Photoshop and there's a lot uh, that I'm missing out on and a lot of opportunities there. And so I was so incredibly thankful when Rachel launched her retouching food photography course and my eyes were open. The world of Photoshop opened up to me and I was like, Oh, this is dangerous. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. And I'm spending so much time in there at the moment. Actually, once you know how to use it, like it brings me a lot of joy. Yeah. Um, but I was the same for the longest time. I had this idea that you had to have a university degree just to open the program. And so that mindset was like, I was just never going to do anything in it, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So for you, um, you know, obviously, you know, background is food photography. That's your focus. You know, what was that trajectory? How did you suddenly make that change, that shift? Because I, you're also very well known for your Lightroom course as well. And obviously have a big, I love editing. I'm such a nerd. So I, you know, editing like post-production and retouching are two separate things. Um, but what I really learned was when I was doing some early client work, there were occasions where like I needed it and I did not know how to use it. And I remember the first time I was uh, going to be on the front cover, no, sorry, not the front cover, inside a magazine. Um, and we needed to move a few objects so that we had more room for text and I couldn't do it. Like my husband 
had to save me. He stayed up all night. You know, this was, he was um, doing more Photoshop stuff at the time than I was. Yeah. And it was just such an eye opener that this opportunity came to me and I, I wasn't ready for those, you know, with those skills. So yeah. then I was really like, this is something that I really need to know. Absolutely. Yeah. And just a little shout out because Matt, um, Matt, your husband is an important part, I think, of your Photoshop um, background. And yeah, he's done a lot of retouching uh, with his work. He's like a commercial photographer. He works for Blue Lemon um, and he's done a lot of retouching. And the thing about Photoshop is that there's so many tools. Like I kind of look at it like here's all your tools. You can take them and it's really your canvas. So there's different, so many different ways of doing things. So He's been a, a huge part in helping me learn and he would do a lot of like portraits and skin. And so we really, because we're nerdy and this is what we do, we yeah. would come together and look at how we could do it for food or he'd learn a new technique and he'd be like, Hey babe, I think this would be so cool if we did this with food photography. So yeah. we started to do that together. So he's such a wealth of knowledge as well. So I really wanted to team up with him because how cool is that yeah. um, to bring both of those, you know, skill sets. And you guys, you, you survived, like from a marriage standpoint, you were able to get through that together. We only fought once for 20 minutes and we never fight. So, um, yeah, we did. <laughs> I can't imagine making a, a video with Ryan. I'm like, oh, I don't think that would go well. <laughs> Just little cameos yeah. here and there, but you yeah, guys are such a great team together. It's really fun to watch. Yeah. Thanks. It was, it was super fun to put together. Yeah. So um, real quick for anybody who's not familiar with your course, Retouching Food Photography, I, I purchased it. The second was available. I was like, I need to do this. This is something that's going to advance my skills. Um, but just, and what we're going to go through here today in this mm. live stream session are really those important skills that you do cover. Because when it comes to Photoshop, I mean, it is a massive, massive tool. Like there is just yeah, very powerful, lots of things to do. Yeah. So many things in there. And so I think that the value of what you're doing and why I'm excited to chat about these things today is because, you know, I have been to workshops in the past. I even attended a workshop last year, Rachel yeah. and I were at a photo festival together and I paid good hard cash, like real money to attend a workshop and walked away knowing nothing because well, I was really, I was excited for you to go there because I wanted you to give me some feedback about this is really great. This is what I learned, but that wasn't the case, was it? No, because I mean, I walked away from it, first of all, because it most of it didn't specifically apply to food and because they were starting at a place where I, I mean, I just, I needed like the baby steps. Like I needed somebody to walk me through just those basics of like, what am I even looking at? Cause if you open up the Photoshop <laughs> platform, it's like, it's just like opening yeah. premiere for the first time or Lightroom for the first time. You're like, Hardly. what am I looking at? <laughs> so, exactly. um, so well, well worth the money to pay for, you know, I think that goes for any kind of courses that we're looking at. You know, I, I definitely think it's helpful to dabble and take education outside of your realm. Like you said, you know, you learn so much about retouching food from working with portraits. Yeah. I absolutely agree. But, you know, I think when you're especially just getting started in a discipline that it can yeah. really help for that to be tailored. It's to good to have a really good base. Yeah. And then like once you feel confident with those, you start to see, oh, I could use this tool over here. And you start to see possibility. And that's just when your knowledge grows. And I think that's Yeah. Really but you have to know how to navigate in the first place. Photoshop is like, you, you can't fake it. It's one of those things like in Lightroom, it's so intuitive. You can just go in and play around with stuff and start yeah. to see what works. But Photoshop is not like that. So yeah. you have All to know how to All use the tools, layers. which tools to pick in the settings for sure. <laughs> I love it. Well, cool. Well, what I want to do right now is uh, you have prepared for us five different techniques that are sort of like the must know techniques. So for those of you who are in the chat yeah. box, um, if you know these techniques, this time a little shout out how to be proud, yeah. right? If you know these techniques. Um, and for those of you who don't, you know, it's a great opportunity to learn these things. So very, very first, let's see if Joni can do the screen share. Multitasking. You guys know I love multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see which one it which one is it, Rachel? It's the uh, it would be the object uh, reflection removal. So that's the pour shot that we have in the restaurant. Oh, here we go. Here we go. You seeing it there, Rachel? Yeah. Okay. So tell us about first of all, what was the situation happening in this shot? Why is there what is what is that in the background? Uh, it is a car, a big <laughs> orange car, like. 
Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it's still, I just still can't believe this happened, but uh, a little bit of a story. So I was at a restaurant. It was a steak restaurant in Melbourne, uh, quite fancy. So, you know, the desserts were nearly $30. Like that's wow. a lot for dessert. So yeah. um, I was shooting for a like online journal that, you know, goes out and does reviews of restaurants and things like that. So this was at the end of the day. Um, we were, I had the table right next to a window and the back of the restaurant backed onto an alleyway. So there, there really wasn't a need for a car to be traveling there, but we set up this <laughs> poor shot and it was a very dark restaurant and I didn't use flash at the time. So I relied on natural light. And just as we were, you know, get set up, had the angle, everything focused ready. Then they did the poor shot. Then this car came just as we were doing the poor shot and pulled up in the background. And I just was like, my heart was sinking inside because I thought this has yeah. just ruined this beautiful hero shot. Yeah. Um, and the car just actually stayed there the entire time while we were finishing up. It didn't move. So we couldn't necessarily do the shot again. And yeah. plus we'd, we'd done so many dishes that for a restaurant to do another $30 dish, um, oh, yeah. it's supposed to add up too. So I, at the time, really didn't know how to tackle this, but there is a technique, what's called a plate, um, and plates help us remove large objects. So I actually uh, almost, you know, I think it was something that was maybe a little bit subconscious in my mind, but I had something, another shot from that series that I could help to use ah. with uh, this car in the background. So in an ideal world, I would have loved to have just done it again, but it's not always possible because you've got time constraints. Um, we were coming up to the lunch rush hour. So mm -hmm. being able to rely on Photoshop in a situation like this is so important. So this was one of the first times that I had to do a really complex yeah. um, removal. And now that I know how to do it, and I actually teach this exact example in the course, because I think this is a really important technique. Um, but once you learn a few tools, you would actually be surprised how easy something like this can be to remove if you yeah. have the right assets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that that's been one of the things that for me was important is realizing the importance of shooting those plates and now getting in right. something you reinforce with that you teach is that, you know, you really need to ensure that you're shooting those plates, that it makes that job that much easier. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, even with Matt in his work, that's something that they have to do to get those assets. And, you know, you and me at the Palm Springs Photo Festival, we're at a number of workshops and listening to other commercial photographers who were talking about um, getting plates as well. So yeah, such absolutely. an important workflow. Absolutely. I remember actually speaking of that, cause I do, there was a cookbook with the very first cookbook shoot I ever did. And I, I, there was a lot that I did not know back then. And so I was working with the art director and, uh, there was also the marketing head was there and, you know, the chef and stylist and, and I'm like, God, I'm, I don't know if I'm ready for this, but you know, you, you just muscle yeah. up and you do it. But I remember them asking me to shoot plates. And I was like, what does what that, that even mean? <laughs> Why do you want me just to shoot the background by itself? That makes no sense. Right. But I mean, obviously now I'm like, Oh God. Yeah. That's yeah. Exactly I think what you see, thing. like it doesn't necessarily make sense and because, because we shoot food photography, like yeah. plates to us is such a weird cost. Like it sounds like I'm shooting food, you know, just right. a plate with the food. Um, <laughs> but then once you start to see how you can use them, like they're just so valuable. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right. So number one example right there, how to remove large distractions. Yeah, that and that can include reflections as well. So as food photographers, how many times have you shot a wine glass and you just see everything? Yes. And it's distracting too. So absolutely. Okay. So let's jump into the composites here. You ready for yeah. the composite? I love this shot. This, I hadn't seen that. I feel like I've seen a lot of your it's a new one. work, but I was like, Ooh, this one's yeah. really pretty. Look at this. What kind of cake this is, is that? Isolation creation, um, carrot cake, no. but essentially, you know, a composite really is taking several images and putting it into one. So in commercial advertising, especially beverage photography, this is a technique that uh, is relied on. And one of the things that I'm focusing on right now is trying to get my photography to the next level. And so using some of these Photoshop uh, techniques to help me do that. So essentially what I did was I just uh, did the maple syrup drizzle across uh, the cake, 
taking a number of shots, really focusing on making each one thick and juicy and drippy, um, and then combining them in uh, Photoshop. So on Instagram later this week, I'm going to do like a sort of time lapse of putting this one together. Oh, cool. Uh, so, so we can see that. Yeah, but it's a great technique. Um, and it, it can be used in so many different ways to combine so many different elements in a shot. Yeah, no, I say this technique of being able to composite multiple images together and get the best of each individual one was like hands down, absolutely necessary on a recent shoot of, um, I did a pancake shot, shoot for some packaging. Like it's going to yeah. be on the front of the package and we wanted those absolutely perfectly placed drips. And I mean, you can't, it, there was no way to do it without a composite going on. Exactly. And when you get to that, you know, I, I haven't shot packaging myself, but I worked as a stylist for that. Yeah. And so we have an art director in the production company and then we would literally sit there and be like, drip on this shot and drip on that shot or whatever <laughs> it was or the, the way the caramel was and then you'd put it all together. So you're really working at that sort of micro level. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, yeah. as much as we want to control that darn syrup, it just gets unpredictable. So <laughs> yeah. I love it. Okay. So next one, what's the next one in the lineup, Rachel? Uh, the next one is blemishes and cleaning. Oh, this is the, the famous chocolate cake. Yeah. So Bunt. I mean, what I want to say is like, there's nothing wrong with imperfections and there's nothing wrong with blemishes. You know, food is real. It, you know, it comes sometimes with spots on it and all kinds of things. So it's not that those things are inherently bad, but when you can remove distractions, then we can really focus on like the beauty of the food and what the story is telling us. So mm -hmm. it really is a personal preference. I think how, where that line sits for you, but it's really good to be able just to remove those things. So on Instagram today, I, I shared a whiskey shot and there's a few little splashes on the glass and just removing them, just, it just makes the photo something like, it just makes it, mm, I'm trying to say more pretty, but that's not really, <laughs> that right. good, but I guess like connecting to the beauty of the color of the whiskey. Yes. So you're just removing those things so you can focus on like the key hero aspects of the photo. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, There's a certain amount of finishing in that work that just kind of takes yeah. it to that next level. And with this chocolate cake, um, I shot this a few years ago, but I, I did put berries on the top and I shot that and it was really pretty. Then I found some different lighting and I wanted to explore and cut it open. So I took the berries off because at that point with this lighting, it, didn't, it looked a little weird. And so I'm left with all these little indentations on the top of the chocolate plate. <laughs> so, you know, I was playing around with that and I really like this shot and just being able to remove them, you know, is going to take less time than me going and getting new ingredients and baking another cake and setting it oh, up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's just like the famous, the famous saying, right? Just fix it in post. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's, sometimes it can be like, you don't want to get lazy to be like, fix it in post. Right. But really, I think being able to choose between when you know that, yeah, that's going to be really easy and doable. Yeah. Um, and then knowing what assets to to take to help you get there. And so help. Yeah. Well, and I think that since taking your course, you know, and really understanding the workflow, because I think you present the workflow really well yeah. in Photoshop. Which is important, yeah. Yeah. And I think that for me now approaching photo shoots, I think about things differently because now I think about, you know, I used to think about, and I still do think about, okay, well, what kind of modifications do I know I can make in Lightroom in terms of that edit? Mm -hmm. um, but then taking it now a step further, knowing then what additional things, um, you know, I, well, I, I'll share them for the end, but, um, but yeah, just that workflow for you, you know, cause I think that, you know, again, you have so much passion and energy for Lightroom and a Photoshop, you know, for you, how would you like share with somebody? And we've kind of shared some of this, but what would really be those dynamic differences between the two, like the editing versus yeah. the retouching? I mean, I think Photoshop, you can use camera raw, but camera raw is actually a plugin. Like it's not the core body of Photoshop and Photoshop's not a cataloging system. And really it is there to do that sort of retouching and like essentially you can create totally different types of art because we have all the layers and the different tools. So Lightroom is really getting your raw file to the point where it's editable and shareable and it's like a base. And then you can go into Photoshop and just take little tools and make those adjustments or create, you know, something with com composites and all that type of stuff. So 
yeah. two different programs, but they integrate really well together, um, which is another key as well to be able to sort of have three touch files saved into your raw editor mm-hmm. works, you know, because I've had clients who are like, I don't really like that color that you chose. Can we change it? And I'll change it. And they're like, mm, still not there. So you don't want to have to do the whole file like from scratch every single time. So That's knowing cool. those workflows and how to save them into a catalog is just, oh. it's going to save you so much time and stress. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's definitely where Photoshop can get overwhelming too. Is just like, how do I keep track of all this? So, oh, all the things. Yeah. 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 And all large files as well. All the things. All right. So we've got the cake. Uh, let's see next up, which one? Straightening, straightening and shaping. Oh, which one is that? Let's see. Oh, uh, here we go. Cafe shot. Yeah. So straightening and shaping is really about having tools that you can like manipulate and warp and rotate, straighten. So there's a couple of tools that we do there. So we talk about shaping as well. Um, Shaping, you might have to plump up a burger bun or straighten the side of a cake or something like that. So uh, in the cafe here, you might just think, well, Rachel, why didn't you just get, you know, straight on to the the subject? But on the left-hand side, we had a huge concrete pole. And this was at a cafe and we had um, like dining guests around. So we wanted to get this. And this is actually as straight on as I could get. So then being able to like fix some of these things. So Lightroom to a degree does, is able to straighten things, but you don't have the same control um, as you do in Photoshop because you can really isolate different sort of local areas of the photo that you want to straighten or shape. So, well, it's like the, I think my favorite tool that I learned in the course that I didn't know before that I, maybe you used in this shot um, was the puppet warp tool. Yeah. That one's, that one's a lot of fun to work with. It sounds a little intimidating, but once you know a few tricks, um, it's really, it's just such a good thing to know because there are times where you're going to get distortion with the lenses and angles that you're shooting. So knowing how to like fix those is, it's just such a great asset, especially for commercial work or client work. Yeah. I love it. Okay. And then let's see, we've got one more in the lineup here, which is our macarons. Yeah. So light and color enhancement, and they're sort of two different techniques. So we can change color, but we also have, um, dodging and burning. Mm -hmm. So essentially like in Photoshop, you can just change the color of anything, which I think is so important right now with a lot of us, we're seeing like, um, sort of uh, not breaks in the food chain, but <clears throat> there is less. We're seeing, you know, in Canada, I'm not always able to get berries, for example. Um, so just being able to like change the color of food is just so important. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the things that I've had to do the most for clients is change color of, of things, especially when you're doing like magazines, they might want you to change the background to be the same color as the font, the title font that they're going to use for a spread. So really knowing how to, to do that is, is so invaluable with client work. Absolutely. Especially food yeah. because it's so colorful. Oh yeah. I mean, there's been tons of times that, um, yeah, I've had clients who they want to adjust the color of a napkin or whatever, so that it's more fitting with their, with their brand aesthetic. So absolutely. Well, um, so uh, like I mentioned, I bought Rachel's course and I have since gotten very dangerous in Photoshop. So I wanted to share with everybody some of my recent, Yay. some of my recent work and some moments where Photoshop really changed the game where I'm like, ah, oh, this is so exciting. So let's go ahead and do a little share here. It's so great. Like when you get a client email and they're like, can you do this? And you're like, yes, yeah, I can. With eyes closed and like happy client, great client experiences you know, lead them to understand that as a photographer, we need to know how to problem solve. Yeah. Oh, it's all about problem solving. That was probably one of the biggest, I think you had mentioned at one point, one of the biggest takeaways from the photo festival that we went to last year was just that we're problem solvers above anything else. All right. Are you seeing my, my, uh, Lightroom right here? Um, I'm seeing a bunch of the examples that we had. Hmm. Um, here we go. Joni, Joni on. I know what it's like when you share these things on Zoom. There's so many windows that come up. And like, Which one do you want to share? Are you seeing Lightroom now? Yes. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. I okay. love this shot so much, especially this time of year. Like it just makes me feel like, yay, spring. Spring is here. Even though we can't go outside. 
I know, I know. Well, this was shot, oh goodness, maybe six weeks ago um, when I, you know, and I was so excited to find the tulips and this was great. And so yeah. this particular client, this is for Coaches Oats. And actually, if you go to coachesoats.com, um, you will see this in the banner right now. I saw it, it's so pretty. And so the so thing good. is with, um, with shooting for them, they have very specific requirements. Actually here, I can pull up the- um, That's a really good thing to mention. Yeah. Um, especially when it comes to like doing clients' websites, everyone has a different theme or template and there's, you really need to know the exact aspect ratio of what you're working with to get the shot for them. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And that has been in here. Let's pull it up here. Do, 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 just so you guys can see it. Um, so this is what the website looks like. And so there are very specific specifications for this size of this image. It looks um, so good. <laughs> Thank okay. you. It's very springy. And what's fun is that, you know, they really provide a lot of direction, a lot of insight of what they're looking for. Like they're very specific with the color of the background and the props and everything. So it's, so it's really fun to work with them, but um, they need this very specific aspect ratio, but they want to be able to crop it themselves because, um, my contact mm, at coaches, Oats, she also has, you know, some Photoshop skills. And so she wants to be able to manipulate it for, you know, kind of take the image and then do what she wants with it. Um, but so in order to get that aspect ratio, you need a big enough background. Well, so they wanted mm. to use this blue background and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what this it looks like. More what that? Often you'd imagine like clients want to use the background that you're like, Oh, it's not big enough. <laughs> exactly. So here's, here's what the truth is, right? Yep. <laughs> here's what we were working with. And so obviously in order to get everything that we want in the scene and be able to be cropped to that ratio, I needed to be able to be this far back, which obviously leaves all this dead space. Now yep. I know that the final image is going to be cropped, but I don't want to deliver this image to a client that just, no. And janky. one of the reasons too, like you mentioned, uh, the design is good in Photoshop. Uh, but not all of your clients will be. So sometimes I have delivered files where I haven't, I've left it open for them and they'll post it on Instagram and they won't crop it or they'll leave one of the, you know, there might be like a tripod or a ladder in the shot or something like that. So you want to deliver it sort of foolproof to clients because in the end, if you if they post that, you as a photographer, like how are you going to look? Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. We have some doozies. <laughs> And then the other thing is too, because I'm shooting so wide and we're shooting at 35 millimeter on this, which this was on my 24 to 70 lens, but there is a little bit of like the distortion action happening, right? Like these, <laughs> these poor little raspberries are just kind of falling over over yeah. here. And so using the tools in the course, um, I think it was a, it was a variety of, but it was mostly the kind of straightening tools and uh, things it's like that being able, being able to isolate that we can just kind of go the before and the after it just. It just makes it, it tightens so it up. Polished. And Jody, how long did it take you to do both of those things? Um, this was probably all in and I'm still, I would say I'm not as speedy cause I don't do it as often, but, um, for me about 15 minutes. I mean, that is so eye opening because a lot of us, and I know I said this this morning on Instagram, I used to think that Photoshop just took hours. And so yeah. I was like, I don't have that time, but once you know a few tools, you can just you'd be amazed at what you can do in 15 minutes. Yeah, it's incredible. So it just really like there was no other solution in camera. And so it was the, it was a little bit of Photoshop action. Those two, those two adjustments really yeah. made and the that's, difference. It, that's quicker than, you know, going out and finding a new background or yeah. painting one, especially if it's like last minute and you don't have the time to do that. Yeah. For the well, and they love this background. I've shot on this background for them before and, you know, it's been perfect. And so they just wanted to continue with that. And so it was, it was just the right background, but I'm so excited. I love it. It makes me smile so much. Little room. So, okay. And then one other example. So I shot a cookbook uh, this past October. And for anybody who watched the behind the scenes of that, it was total chaos. Um, it was, we had nine chefs a day <laughs> coming through my kitchen. I've never seen it on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> chaos. Um, but we were moving 
quickly. We, because we just had a lot of shots to get through a lot of people to get through. Um, I mean, ultimately I can't wait for this to come out in a couple months, but one of the shots, um, that happened, let's see is, let's see, this is the, I think this is the after. Um, so we've got a little cheese pull. Now we all know how delicate cheese pulls are, right? Just thinking of, you know, it's like a make or break situation. So this is actually not a composite though. So we did get the cheese pull in one shot. Beautiful. Um, yeah which we were pretty happy about. And now I've left this, you know, there's a certain amount of uncropped here going on, but one of the things, oh, this is, so this is the after. So what I want to show you though, is what happened before. Look at these little guys, right? We've got again, some distortion going on. We've got sort of this little like falling off the edges. And so I was like, dang it. I mean, after you kind of don't notice it in the moment, but you know, we're just shooting and we're fast and we're moving and exactly. there's so many things happening. Yeah. yeah. So many things happening. And so then it wasn't until I got into post that I'm like, ah, oh, those don't, I should have backed up, shot at a different focal length that I should have, could have, would have done, but you can't recreate the moment. Cause I can't bring the chef back and do all the, you know, like it is what it is. So here just that simple little click and it just tightens it up so nicely. And you know what else I love about that too, is this, they're just a fraction larger as well. And I think those ratios work a little bit it's a little bit more complimentary too, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It just kind of flows a little bit better. Cause when they were smaller, it just sort of like, yeah, it was a little kind of off kilter. So it's having that ability. And again, this was maybe like five minutes worth of Photoshop work just to adjust and to go ahead and clean up around, you know, around the edges of it. And, and nobody knows the difference. You know, people are like it's cheating. I was like, it's not cheating. It looks great. No. I mean, yeah. I mean, I know people are like, there's some people are like you have to get everything right in camera, but I think one of the things to remember is that like art and creativity, this is just another tool to help you get there as well. Yeah. So there's just so many possibilities that come with Photoshop. Absolutely. Well, and so one other thing that I wanted to share, cause I had brought it up and I feel like I'm just seeing more and more of this. And I know Rachel, we've talked about this before is the importance of motion. Um, is that, in, you know, as a professional photographer in this day and age, whether you're in food or not in food, it kind of doesn't matter. Um, that motion is going to be an important part of your uh, portfolio. Yeah. And so and that but, feels really scary for me. Like when I, we went to Palm Springs Road Festival and they were talking about how important motion was. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a photographer. I, I don't know how to do video yet. So that was like really, oh, really another thing that I need to learn. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I get it. Like a lot of us are just like, that's another skill and there's not enough time to learn everything and clients want motion. Yeah. But here's the thing. And so, well, for me, you know, like I know Premiere pretty well, because obviously I make videos all the time for YouTube, yeah. but you know, I was like, I don't know how to make a GIF, right? Like I can, I can do, you know, videos. And so I would just kind of like make things work, like from a GIF standpoint and like make it work in Premiere is like my right. platform that I use a lot, but I have discovered through the magic of retouching food photography, <laughs> that there is an easier way. Easy so way to do GIFs share with you guys. You probably saw this on Instagram this week, but this was just like a simple, I mean, it's very simple. This took all of two minutes to create. This is like no big deal, but it's fun and it's exciting. And it's something that too, when we're working with clients that, you know, maybe we want to do just something a little extra and special um, and be generous yeah. that we can throw things like this in the mix. And it's just like, oh, wow, what an added incentive, what an added bonus. Yeah, and it's, provided. like you said, it is so easy to do, actually, and it's a great way to get started with motion, and I'm actually so obsessed now. And a couple of client, the last couple of client things that came my way at the end of last year, they all wanted some kind of uh, motion, and I was speaking to a, a PR company in New York, and, and we talked about, like, how can we how can I stay within their budget and get them what they need and have something fun? And like gifts was just the answer because it's yeah. so simple. And once you think about how you can, I mean, like with videos, there's so many storyboarding and things like that, but with gifts, it's, it's just a lot more, it's so simple. Yeah. Um, and I had a lovely photographer called Emily uh, in rolling in the last week. And she, in three hours, she bought the course, learned how to make a gift, shot a gift, created a gift. <laughs> like it's, amazing I, i'm telling you it is so simple but it is so fun 
Sorry. Well, and I'll, and I can attest to making that in Photoshop is way easier than it is to do it in Premiere or in iMovie or in any of those other I think so too, yeah. platforms. Yeah, literally super, um, just super easy. So if anyone wants to join Matt and I in retouching food photography, um, so until the 10th, so that's this Friday, I'm giving away the GIF mini course as a bonus, but also um, we have a, another bonus we're giving away, how to customize Photoshop to um, for speed and like what someone like Matt, who's a pro, what he would do to make his retouching uh, quicker and more efficient. So I'm just obsessed with GIF so much. So I love any opportunity to um, give that to the community as well. So everyone who enrolls before Friday in the painful bonuses, I'll also throw that in. You can learn gifts with me. And it's you just so much it. fun. Yeah, you're just gonna like, like, why didn't I do this earlier? That's what I was thinking, so. <laughs> you're gonna say, well, it's like, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the draw to it is clear. Cause like I was recently, so we've got like one of those little Amazon Alexa devices at our house. It's got yeah. a little screen on it and it plays like random recipe videos. I don't know if everybody's does that, but mine does it. And so the kids have gotten obsessed, but they love the ones where the food is dancing, like oh, yes. all the stop motion. They just giggle incessantly. They just think it's the funniest thing ever. So now I'm like, well, you know, mommy can create those. They're can like, create those too. Yeah. <laughs> And if you've been following my Instagram for the last little bit, um, I've also shown it's possible to take a still image. So I've taken a still image that I shot like two years ago, and now you can turn it and repurpose that. Oh, was that the one of the star movie. anise? Did you animate that yeah, one? Yeah, all the, um, I had like a little lemon, a dehydrated lemon on the top of a cocktail and just made it move slightly. Uh, again, like took me 20 minutes to do that once you know, and like, to do that to photos that are mean something a lot to me, be able to reshare them in a new way. Um, yeah. I just find it so exciting. I know I'm a little bit nerdy about this, but I just think it's so fun. And I the next one hours, like just watching them. I probably <laughs> need a little Alexa so I can just like watch it go over and over. Exactly. You get kind of, you get entranced. That's the magic mm -hmm. of it. And that's why brands like it too. So I've just yeah. dropped the link in for everybody. Let me make sure I did the link correctly. Cause I don't trust myself to not do a typo. Um, retouchingfoodphotography.com is where you want to go. Uh, if you want to check out the course, uh, now we do understand and what I think is an important thing to say here. And I think Rachel has been very articulate in saying this, um, throughout the promotions of opening this course is that this may not be the time for everybody that we completely totally. understand that this is, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of people affected by what's going on, but at the same time, we didn't want to not share this for those yeah. who have the availability. Exactly. I mean, I, I had moved this, op like moved opening the course up because um, people are like, they wanted to spend some time that they have to learn that skill. And so if that's you, amazing. If it's also not the right time for you, that's, you know, you can join at a future point as well. So um, we also didn't raise the price because we've Photoshop added some new tools and we've, we've got some new lessons coming uh, this week, but I didn't want to raise the price because of what's happening. So Absolutely. I just wanted to give photographers an opportunity to jump in, get some bonuses if, you know, if that's available to you. So, yeah. And if not, and if this isn't your time and you're, you know, you are stuck at home, but you can't afford it right now, you know, there's, there's also plenty of YouTube stuff out there, yeah. um, other resources as well. But for those of you who do want the shortcut and want to really rock it, um, I, I can't recommend it enough because yeah, I, a, I'm very thankful for this. And once we've had students who have gone from not even being able to open a photo to like layering and masking. So if you can get somebody that can share with you how to use those tools, you'll be surprised at how easy Photoshop can be. Yeah. And fun. It is fun. It is a lot of fun. Okay, here, let me make sure. Hold on. I've got an agenda and I try to stay on my agenda. I think I got through all that I was supposed to yeah. cover. So um, what I want to do now, if you're up for it, Rachel, is uh, do some Q&A. Looks like Always. we've got plenty of folks hanging out here. It does not work. Retouchingfoodphotography.com. Oh, it's because it doesn't have the HTTP. Oh, YouTube, YouTube, <laughs> HTTPS. Hold on. I got to manually type it. Uh, da, da. I mean, I'm pretty sure I checked it too before we jumped on. Yes, it definitely. Okay, good. Look for the one that's got the hyperlink. Problem is if I just drop retouchingfoodphotography.com yeah. in the chat, it doesn't link it. But if I put the HTTPS in front of it, it, does. it that's silly. 
I'm sure that silly, was silly YouTube. <laughs> they do the same thing in the description box. So anybody who's YouTube, uh, put the HTTPS. Although, well, I won't go into YouTube shenanigans. Um, okay, here we go. Is it working? I'm just making sure that it's working. Yes, it's working. Okay. Uh, oh, Paul, Paul is here to save the day. Paul has, uh, he was a member of uh, full-time framework. He's always Yay. a rock star. He's been uh, keeping track of all the questions I missed. Oh, that's so lovely. <laughs> I love it. Uh, all right, here we go. Um, what did I miss, Paul? Question from Andrew Piggy. How do you get out of the slump and scare of starting working with something new and for a new skill? So how do you push yourself if you're scared to get moving forward? What's your recommendation, Rachel? If you're scared to move forward, um, I think as a creative, we're like really hard on ourselves. And when we start a new skill, we're not good at it. Um, but I actually think that that is what you want to strive for, you know, and in a world where like we share everything, like when I started journey, I'm not sure if you feel the same way, but Instagram was not huge. So you would just share it on your little blog and you get like a small amount of traffic. So I always say to people, if it's a new skill, you know, and you, you don't have to share the results with anyone if you're not happy with them, but at least you've taken that step. It's going to give you some confidence and some problem solving to do it better next time. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think failing, the reason I would say we're successful in this point in our career is because we've failed a lot, like a lot. All the time <laughs> and still do. <laughs> Still yeah. Yeah. on a fairly regular basis. Well, and I saw there's a um, Facebook group that I'm in, the Commercial Photographers Network. It's a great Facebook group. Um, and somebody had posted that they are typically, uh, they shoot portraits and they shoot weddings. And they said they were, since now they're at home, they're dabbling in food and trying to figure that out. But they just, then they jumped on Instagram and they saw all these other, you know, people with successful yeah. followings and established portfolios yeah. and thought, it's a different world. It's like, why do I even, started. Yeah. yeah. So but she said, really why do I started. even, why do I even start? And it's like, oh, well, you just, you got to start. You just start, right? Like everybody started somewhere else and just don't think about like where you're at today I always think about where I'm going to be five years from now if I make this choice today it's always yeah. and productive. hopefully just having fun with the skill and like the first time it might not be as fun and I think it's hard because I get attached to results like I'm dabbling in video right now and I want to put it on Instagram and I was like oh that didn't work yeah so really just be like I'm just going to set this up pump some music and have some fun if something happens great if it doesn't then I will have learned something for next Sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. But I would also encourage people like post that stuff too. Like the stuff that you're like, ah, I don't know if this it is good. Enough. Enough. No, yeah. it doesn't. And I think that when you post it and when you share that work, even if it's not perfect or even if, and we're always going to be our own worst critics, but I think that it just like ups the ante for you and that it puts pressure on in a way that wouldn't, if you didn't share that, like you to me, try, I always yeah. feel like yeah. there's, there's a greater, I don't know, there's something else there when I post it and that it propels me forward better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Looks like uh, da, da, da. Stephen Miller, what are the plates you are shooting? So, uh, go back into, we talked about being able to remove distractions and issues that, yeah. uh, when so we plate, I think technically is like your scene or the background without the subjects in it, it's going to help you. So that's like a, an, a retouching asset. It's just going to help you remove certain things basically is what that's for. So a lot of commercial photographers have a workflow to to get plates so that's going to help their digitech or their retoucher put files together so yeah. hopefully that makes sense which is essentially just like the background without subjects however you can use plates sometimes they will have subjects uh in them but essentially it's there just as an asset to help you remove things or combine things yeah yeah well and so like when we go back to that example i don't know if i still i don't still have it up but um, the example of the restaurant where the car pulled up in the background is that you also yeah. had another shot from that same vantage point. Ideally, yeah, yeah I would. The car there, yeah. that that would yeah. be an easy fix. Except if it stays in for hours. Well, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, and then I do well, that's exactly right. Yeah. And perfect. Perfect. So hopefully that answered, answered the question there, Stephen. Um, let's see. Brenda wants to know, so just as far as like creating the motion and the gifts, um, 
I mean, it's definitely a step-by-step -step process and that's what, you know, you can go through just in order to do that. But any other like tidbits or details about that, creating the motion, the videos, the gifts and- Yeah, I think, um, so I recently, like this launch, I updated the gift course just to help people think about like cinemagraphs, stop motion and gifts are all actually their motion, but they're like slightly different in the way they're presented. So if you see like a lot of us use gifts on Instagram, we have gift keyboards, they're usually just like a forward and back motion. Um, so they're a little bit more choppy and that's what makes them kind of fun. And we've just come accustomed to them because we actually use them a lot on social media. So with gifts, it's gonna be different to stop motion because stop motion really like, we, that's what we used to use for cartoon animation. So it looked like they were moving is where gifts can be a little bit more choppy. So I think that makes it even simpler to get started with because it doesn't have to be seamless and you could put three shots together or as simple as I've shared one of my pink lemon meringue before, untoasted and toasted, untoasted and toasted. Mm -hmm. So that is just so simple. It's just two shots put together, um, but it's one of my best performing gifts. Everybody loves it. Yeah. Yeah. So, there was one that uh, I saw anybody who's familiar with Leslie Grow. She's a food photographer out of mm -hmm. LA. Love yeah. following her. And she did one I don't know if she posted this in her feed or if it was just stories or it was like something she was working on as like an isolation creation, but I, I saw it was like taking berries from unfrozen to frozen. And it was, Oh so yes. Yeah. So there's so many things like, and it's just two ideas coming together. So I, for me, that is a different thought process to like putting together a stop motion video. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in the course, I do give you some ideas of like, well, we go through like ideation of ways to make it simpler, ways to make things fun. Because a lot of us, when we just start, we're like, oh, I'm just going to put together a stop motion of like building something and then taking it apart. But there's actually yeah. quite a lot of different things you could do. Absolutely. Exactly. It's a lot of fun. That's a lot. Yeah. So hopefully that helps a little. Yeah, definitely. Um, Anise, I think, so we think we covered the empty plate concept. So hopefully that made sense. Um Paul wants to know, or Nini wants to know, uh, removing blemishes, did you use masking techniques? Uh, for removing blemishes, it probably depends on what it is. Usually the thing about Photoshop and when we go into like a category of blemishes and cleaning, we'll give you like, how many tools do we have? We probably have like four tools that you can use in a few different techniques. And the reason is because every uh, retouching job is gonna be different depending on the texture, depending on the food, depending on the lighting, not every single technique is gonna work across the board. So that's why we really need like a toolkit of what we're going to use. So it is possible to use masking with certain things, but it's not something I can say for sure is gonna work all the time for those reasons. So I think again, that's why Photoshop can be intimidating because you can't necessarily fake it. So having four techniques to remove blemishes and cleaning is going to help you get the best result for that particular photo. Yeah. Every, every photo is unique for sure. Um, let's see. Oh, Suzanne wants to know what computer do you use? And I'm in general or what computer yeah. do you use, Rachel? I, I am an Apple snob. So I always buy Apple. Um, I have a MacBook Pro from 2013, actually. Nice. I, my life savings on that back in, back in the day and it's still going strong. And I've, I've had to get a graphics card replaced, but I've taken it to Apple and they're like, don't buy a new computer. This is one of the best models we ever had. So it is still going strong. I have an external monitor, a BenQ that I use for editing, but I just love my laptop. So MacBook Pro. That's um, awesome. Yeah. No, I've got a MacBook Pro too as well for most of my uh most of my go-to stuff. It's a 2015, still has the USB. Oh, yeah, that's still, you know, the good year. As far as computers go, that's like ancient. So <laughs> I know, but then I also have my, what I'm on today is my tower, which I can't tell you what it is. Cause I just told Ryan at a certain point, cause the video doing the volume of video content that I do it's, yeah. at a certain point, it was like, I need something a little crazier. If anybody wants to nerd out, he, he wrote it. It is not a, not a great laid out blog post, but he wrote a blog post of what's what's in my computer. I don't know here. Let me, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> um, while I find that let's find a question. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, 
Oh, good question. So Donald Klein, are you talking cinemagraphs? There are apps for that. So maybe if you want to speak to the cinemagraph side of things. Totally. Um, so, and someone has asked me like, there are, I'm sure there's apps to put in GIFs together as well. So if you think about, you've got two photos, I'm sure there's an app you can just put them together. Um, however, the GIFs that I do, you will need Photoshop to get some of those assets. Or if you want to take a still shot um, that actually moves, that's not necessarily something that an app will do. So there's different processes of how to get all those assets together. So I think it just depends on what you want to share. And if you want to get, depends on how you want to get started with GIFs. So there is that possibility too. I'm sort of trying to take it to that next level where I am taking certain um, images and then I need to use Photoshop to get all the assets and then I just put it together in there. The other thing I will say is you just need to think about the output of those apps. So what is the quality of the files that they're sharing as well? That's really important because you don't want to put all this time into creating a GIF, especially for a client and then not have it be a quality file that's not going to look great on Instagram. So mm. I'm not sure if anyone has found that they have you know, their export is really good, but it's just something to keep in mind, I think. Yeah. Something to pay attention to that final quality. Great question. Um, yeah, I mean, technology is changing so often. So I think it's like so relevant to be keeping up with things like this to like, what is going to be quicker and easier for us? Yeah. Uh, Paul wants to know, are you using perspective warping when straightening? Um, technique, uh, I, I tend to use puppet warp or liquefying. You that is a technique that you can use. I find for what I need, um, those two tools usually work better. So the, okay. What were those two tools again? The puppet warp? Um, puppet warp and liquefy. To liquefy. Use the thing. Transform as well. So again, like we're talking about, there's so many different ways of doing things, which yeah. I find really exciting because then you can use what is going to work best for that food. Absolutely. Yeah. That's good. Um, Let's see. Oh, good question. Donald Klein Media. Do you photograph an sRGB or Adobe RGB? Do you ever switch to CMYK when it's for publication? Yeah, I think you do need to understand the differences and what clients or what uh, printing needs are. Usually for the web, sRGB is just what um, I typically go with. I am going to get a shot printed. So uh, I haven't decided. Usually I would use local companies in Vancouver, but I'm not actually sure if they're open. Okay. So if you're going to use something like Bay Photo, you can actually go onto their website and they will tell you what to export it as. So you have the best file. Yeah. So typically it's just sRGB for web and social media use, but it is good to know the differences if you have that need for clients for sure. But I would recommend, and I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but um as far as though on the camera itself, I would put oh, on the I would shoot Adobe. Well, I think I, I think he was asking both. So I would say for sure right. on the export side of things, but when it comes to shooting, uh, shoot an Adobe RGB just so you have the greater mm -hmm. spectrum in terms of that color space. Yeah. All right. I know oh, there's just so much to know, isn't there? So many things to know. So Jody's got a question about she just purchased the course. Thank you, Jody. Oh, so <laughs> excited to have you, Jody. So, um, but it sounds like she's having issues accessing the gift tutorial. So any, okay. any purchases, um, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, I will see it in my email. So hello at tulastudio.com. Usually what happens is the gift is like a separate course. So when you get enrolled into Teachable, you'll see when you're in your dashboard, there's like a, uh, a little, I think it's in the top right hand corner says my courses. If you click on that, you'll see all the things that you have access to. So it should be in there, um, but if it's not, just, you can also reply to the order confirmation and just say, hey, Rach, can you just check this out and make sure it's in my account? And I can do that for you. Not a problem. Perfect. And I just dropped, I just dropped your contact down there too. So, all right. Um, Ellie wants to know, um, she says she's never been able to clone and mask very well, let alone on something and make it look so smooth. It yeah. looks so smooth. You make it look so smooth, Rachel. Any? <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing, um, the clone tool is amazing. The thing we want to learn, know about the clone tool is opacity and flow. So Matt and I go through like the differences between opacity and flow and when to use um, 
different types of flow for different tools. So we actually have like a quick guide. So you guys don't have to remember all this stuff. You just have this quick guide reference of what we recommend to get started with. So those things are gonna be the best as well as your selection points uh, with the clone tool. Uh, so when you start to look into getting different flows and different selection points, uh, it's actually just such a beautiful tool to use. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's, oh, it's the next level ninja skills. That's where yeah. it's like, oh, cause I remember like before I took the course too, and, and just, you know, just retouching things and being like, that looks so janky. <laughs> yeah. And, and normally that is because you have not only have to pick the tool, but you have to make sure you've got really great settings for the texture or lighting that you're working with. So we cover all those things and help you work out where that is in your photo. We also have a Facebook group and some people, um, I had a photographer in Germany who was trying to rebuild an egg and she was like, I'm not quite sure. I'm not getting the texture right. So we troubleshoot like how I will do that or how Matt will do that. So yeah, I love doing that. I get really excited. So there's definitely <laughs> that option for you in the Facebook group too, if you want to join us. Yeah, no, this is one of the things that I love about you, Rachel, is that you're, you're really a nerd. <laughs> I'm such a nerd, especially when it comes to editing. So I love those problems because Ah, it's just thinking about how you can do that differently. And more, the more problems that you see and the more that you solve, just your knowledge starts to grow. So yeah, no, definitely. It compounds. Um, let's see. Oh, um, I, sorry if I'm, uh, Nasi Ray, Nasi Ray. I, sorry if I'm butchering that. Um, how did you, as far as like the picture that I had from coaches oats with the raspberries on the side, how did I, um, how did I straighten that part? Um, it's effectively the idea that you're kind of cutting out just that portion of the image, exactly. enlarging it slight, slightly, and then adjusting it slightly, and then just cleaning up any of the areas where there's going to be a seam. And that's yeah. all done through through the masking process. Exactly. And that's one of the differences between lines and Photoshop, to go back to what we were talking before, is like you can really isolate just one area of your photo, which is great yeah. because you can all this control over what you want to do with that area. Exactly. Cause yeah, the bowl of oatmeal looked good. The little jar of oatmeal, the tulips. You on just the want to touch, yeah, exactly. Right side. Just got it. Click it in. Um, all right. Oh, riverboat media. How often do you calibrate your monitor? <laughs> this is an interesting one. I have, so I have a, I had a BenQ monitor in Australia and I just couldn't bring it with me to Canada. We didn't we had you know, a lot of stuff to move across country. So I, I got a monitor last year and I actually created a custom profile. So my monitor every day is like, you need to calibrate it. I'm like, no, I don't because it's custom, but <laughs> um, that is something normally I would do it every couple of months when it's on my laptop. Um, but because I have this custom one that I've created, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing going forward with that because you always do want to be calibrating a monitor. So yeah. Yeah. that's probably something I need to think about with the custom, yeah. custom profile. For me, it's like, it, I mean, you know, like full disclosure, it's like the dentist. I don't go as often as I should. Oh, I know the pop-up comes up all the time. And you're like, I'm like, I know, I know I need to calibrate it. I'll get to it later. <laughs> yeah. But, but that being said, best practice, I don't know what the best practice would be for that, but um, certainly I would say uh, like every three to six months would be my answer. Yeah, and I would say like if you've got a like a, a huge cookbook shoot coming up or if you're getting something printed, I would definitely be doing that before the, yeah. the job essentially. Or if you're shooting product photography, I think that's also right because when we're dealing with very specific colors exactly. of a client's product and that needs to be consistent, then that's massively important. Um, all right, looks like do 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 awesome. Jody, she's so excited. I love it. Uh, clone tone, clone tone, clone tool. Maybe Kimmy mean clone tool is challenging. Glad for the guy. Oh, good. So glad you've got what you need there. Um, oh, Rachel, real quick. Can you talk about like just getting Photoshop as a software, like Adobe, what, what that package looks like? Yeah. So if you get Photoshop on its own and every country is going to have its own currency. I feel like it's $20, but if you get Lightroom and Photoshop together, it's $9.99 in most currencies. Um, so that's the photography package. Now, I have seen a lot of photographers get 60 days free subscription with Adobe. Um, if you are currently using the, the CC package, because um, they 
they're doing this little hack where they're allowing people to get 60 days access because of COVID-19 and they want to support photographers. So I've seen a lot of people do that. It, I feel like I popped it in two of my Facebook groups. We had a lot of success, but a few people in different regions were seeing it, not allowing them to do that. But Adobe will also have free trials um, of Photoshop as well. So, you know, if you're going to take advantage of that, it will be a good time to actually learn how to use it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So then, so just head to probably adobe.com and go find that resource. Yeah, or Google their photography package. So yeah. the good thing, I mean, I don't love subscriptions, but everything's now a subscription. But the thing I do love is you always get the latest updates uh, yeah. and the best tools. So yeah, absolutely. And the other thing too, to watch out for, cause there is one package at a certain point, there was like a kerfuffle of like, oh my gosh, they're hiking the rates for Photoshop and, and Lightroom. But in reality, they were just now offering a different package that also has like storage capabilities. Yes. That's the right. more expensive. So I, I personally don't use that. Um, but if you just want the 999, then the photography package. Get you what you need. Get you what you need. I love it. So many good questions, you guys. I think we'll take one more as we've just hit 10 o'clock. Let's see. I'm glad to be having fun. Hey, I know, right? Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. A well question of the best camera. Um, well, she's asking specifically about Canon cameras for photography and filming. Um, but I would say, I mean, my sort of stock answer for what's the best camera is just always based on what's your budget because any modern within the last couple of years DSLR camera that's been created is going to have the capabilities you need to do what you need to do like it's yeah. going to be able I mean, to do you showed that on your stories with like the rebel versus the mark yeah the mark four yeah and I was like whoa yeah, <laughs> like the four thousand dollar camera setup versus a two hundred dollar and I I am such a big believer in buying used camera like I don't I haven't bought used lenses before but I love used camera bodies from and again I'm they're not paying me to say this this is just like where I buy my cameras is bnh uh bhphotovideo.com yeah. and they've got a great return policy great warranty and so I own three now granted I, nobody needs to own this many cameras but maybe <laughs> maybe Rachel but <laughs> I currently have three um but yeah, but their used cameras are fantastic. And so I bought the Canon Rebel T2i for $200. It does video, it does, um, it captures great images. And when I took these two images this weekend, cause I was shooting some cookies and I was like, you know, I was kind of my go-to is my Canon 5D Mark IV, but you know, I'm like, that's like a $4,000 setup between the lens and the body and everything. And I'm like, let's, well, let's pull out the Rebel, right? Cause I'm doing all these beginner videos, you know, entry level videos in April. And I was like, shut the front door. I mean, now the real pixel peepers out there were like, eh, there's a slight difference. I was like, oh, totally. And there's like differences in ISO <laughs> technology that I just recently bought the Nikon, uh, the Z6 oh, yeah. for the mirrorless, which is the video on that is amazing. Is it? Um, and I was comparing the eye because this camera is great for low light and has great ISO. So I was comparing that to my bodies that are six to eight years old. And I can definitely see a difference. However, it's, it's also about like the lighting choices that you have. So there's like so many different things that roll into that, but yeah, yeah you can do some amazing stuff with, um, budget gear too. For Absolutely. Sure. It's, it's kind of like I always say, you know, it's like when we talk about like wines, right. You can get a fantastic wine for like 20 bucks. So yeah. You could go spend like 500 bucks for, you know, real fancy bottle, but like, is it that much better? Is it that, you know what I mean? Like it, yes, it's better. And yes, it's going to allow you to do certain things with those others, but you can absolutely do fantastic work and do professional work. Somebody the other day messaged me that, you know, well, you can't get hired if you're shooting on a crop sensor. I'm like, that's absolutely not true. Like, no, I, no, it's definitely not true. The I've first, I don't know years, other people will be hired. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, if they want to hire you to shoot a billboard, probably not. But for, yeah. for other things, absolutely. Although interesting enough, I was reading about um, you know shooting billboard size things is that you don't, actually don't need massive resol resolution because you're shooting because you're so they, far away, so yeah. far away, and so you can actually for most general crop sensor cameras actually be totally fine there as well. The so changes so much too, like those things are always changing because they're getting so much better. 
it's incredible what the technology is out there. So um, with that, we covered a lot of ground. I thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank today. you so much for having me and everyone joining. Um, if you want to come say hi on Instagram at Tula Studio. Always check awesome. out her gifts. She's yeah. got some killer gifts over there. And uh, certainly if any of you want to check it out, retouchingfoodphotography.com. Um, she's got all the details about the course. I can't recommend it enough. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's open till when, when are you closing the cart? Uh, till Friday, you can get those uh, add-on bonuses. Bonuses. Yeah, so Perfect. definitely, you know, a no brainer if you want to get started with gifts as well. Love it. Love it. All right. Well, hey, take care, you guys. Thank you, Rachel. Thank Thanks you, everybody, everybody for spending some time with us. Take care of yourselves. Um, and yeah, massive hugs, all. Take care. Bye, guys.